So I'm gonna pop this top board off and see. Goodness, look at that. Hey guys, how's it going? Shoot another video today with my bees. Today I'm over in my apiary over at the farm. Uh, we're gonna work a hive real quickly and I'm gonna work the rest of them probably off camera. Definitely wanna do one on camera, but just wanna let y'all join in with me. Um, this is my uh, bee vlog uh, that I'm doing along with some of the other things on my channel. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started and see what's in one of these hives. And y'all can come along with me. All right, on this hive, I had stuck this medium on it. And it doesn't look like they have done much with it because I don't see any comb built on these boxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it now, I'm gonna pop off this. Is this the camera here? I'm gonna pop off this box and see What's in this medium underneath? All right, now, this one looks pretty good. This is my honey medium deep, honey medium deep, if I could speak. <laughs> this was a honey super. I was doing mediums for my honey supers. I do my hive bodies for the brood chambers, I do those as, as deeps. That's what I use your, your deep bodies for. I use the mediums for the, the honey supers. You can see, I can see some capped honey in here, in different places. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one off now, because I'm not as concerned today with the honey. I'm more concerned with just checking, because <clears throat> unfortunately, being the unprepared beekeeper that I am, uh, I let all of the, all my hives here in this apiary, all of them unfortunately swarmed on me this spring before I ever checked them. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is kind of what happens when you have too many hobbies, unfortunately for me. So I'm going to take this box here, I'm going to set it over on top of the other, Let's try and get that queen excluder to pop off of it. I oh, guess it's not going to want to cooperate, is it? There we go. All right. Actually, that's pretty heavy. That's probably a good 40 pounds. I'd say. All right, so I've, I use these queen excluders to keep the queen down here in this bottom box. Let me move my smoker so we're not smoking up the video the whole time. All right, now 
I can see they've definitely been storing some honey down in here too. So let's go ahead and pull these. Let's go ahead and pull these off. Scrape off some of this fur comb they put on top. They like to glue everything together with wax and propolis. Again, if I mispronounce something, I am not a linguist. I'm just an amateur, just an amateur beekeeper. Doing the best I can. So, all right. All right. Pop one of these frames out. Let's see. What's in here? Like I said, most of them had, like I said, these frame, these, all these hives in my apiary had, um, they had swarmed, unfortunately. So, all the, they had queen cells in them, but most of those queen cells had hatched. And so what I'm doing today is I'm going to check and see. There's definitely nectar in here where they've been collecting nectar. There's not a lot of bees in this box. This box actually is pretty light with bee, with the number of bees in here. So that makes me think that, hope that, and based on the amount of honey I see, like I put this empty frame in there and I don't see anything happening with it. This frame is full of honey. I can already see that. All right, I do see brood comb, which is good. I see larva. All right, so you see they've packed some honey up here on the tops. And on this side too, up on the top part, they've got plenty of honey. They built that comb out. Heck, it's probably sticking an inch out from the frame. I mean, look how much that's, look how far that's sticking out. Um, but you got your brood comb here in the middle now i also see larva that is not capped Let's see if you can see it in there can you see the larva i don't know if this camera will focus there's some larva in there um i'm looking to see if i see any eggs that's what i'm looking for I don't see any eggs on this one. Put that one back in. So it's a good sign seeing the um, it's a good sign seeing the uh, the brood comb there and the larva. Oops, dropping my stuff here. These bees are actually being pretty gentle today. Not really buzzing or attacking very much. Uh, not much happening on this frame. Just gonna look real quick. I don't expect the queen to be on this one, but if I see her, I might show her real quick on the camera. But I'm not seeing much. Now, the key to this is to move deliberately through the box. You don't want to be jerking and and doing any hard jerky motions with the bees especially when you're picking frames up and stuff you just want to pick them up gently and move along at a good rate now i can see that this frame here had a lot of brood had a lot of brood in it and the middle part is hatched out and i'm looking in the middle part i don't know if you can see it but in the middle part there's larva in those empty cells Now on the back side, you can see, again, there was brood comb. That's hatched out. I can see larva. And I don't know if you can see them. There's larva in all those empty cells. So that's a good sign. Yep, that's a good sign. So, oh, there she is. You see the queen right there near my thumb? Right here in the picture, 
You see her? There she is. There's the queen. So let's put her back in the box here very gently. Make sure I see where she is and I put her down. She's the one you don't want to squish. So that's a good sign. Really what I was opening this box to see was I was opening this box up to see if there was a queen in here. Typically I don't search too long for her. Typically what I do is I look um, for signs that a queen has been here, you know, recently. So I look for either fresh eggs, fresh or young larva. Um, and I go from there. And so this time, since I happen to see her, I think I'll, uh, I'm gonna close this box up. Just to recap this hive, we found the queen. Hopefully she showed up on the, on the camera. She looked healthy. There was different stages of development of bees everywhere from young larva all the way up to a brood comb that had been capped and will probably hatch here. And the spaces in the middle of the brood comb areas has been filled in with new larva was there. I didn't see the fresh eggs, but honestly there weren't a lot of open cells to look at. Uh, either the cell, all the cells that I saw either had larva in them or they had nectar in them or they had pollen. So, oh goodness, this thing is heavy. Now, the exciting part of beekeeping, of course, is, you know, getting that honey. And so what I've done is I've actually ordered a bee escape board. And so once that bee escape board gets here, then I'm going to pull these, the honey supers off of these hives out here. I've got four hives of honey supers on them and these honey supers have got a fair amount of honey in them. And so last time I collected the honey I did it without the bee escape. I just you know would pull the frames out and I brush the bees off. So this time I'm gonna try something different. Uh, see a couple hive beetles in here. See the bees are chasing them around. Try to see if I can squish them. Yeah, there we go. Got two of them. All right. Got two of them. That stuck to my medium there. Two of those hive beetles are taken out. All right, so let me put this empty honey super on top again. All right. Get everything positioned as good as I can. So that went pretty smoothly. Got to see the queen. Looks like a healthy hive. A heavy honey super that I'm going to pull. So, I think that was a success. Do y'all have any questions about any of the things that I do? Now, I'm not an expert by any means. I've only been doing this for probably three, four years now. So, I'm, I'm always learning and I watch a lot of videos and uh, to try to, to learn how to do this. I took a class um, and got actually a grant through our county extension office here um, where I live in Virginia and that worked out pretty good um, I got some money to help fund my first few hives and equipment and then I've uh, bought some but I've also had Some friends that had gotten into it and then got out of it and they gave me some Some uh, some of the equipment So I'm gonna go in this hive here real quick. Maybe we'll do two hives because that one was kind of quick We'll do two hives and see how how they look So I'm pop this top board off and see goodness look at that they have definitely filled that comb in now you'll notice something probably looks odd about this hive and this was a mistake of mine at some point in time what i did was i took one of the frames out of this medium box i don't know why or when i did it but when i did it i took it out i left it out and what they've done is they've built honeycomb between the in the big spaces typically you have these little spaces you know what they call their b space your b space three-eighths of an inch but of course i left significant amounts here and so you can see that honey it looks good but this box also was pretty full um, in the middle 
Now, this was a split off of that hive right there. And so I split up that hive, the first medium, the third box up, the first medium on that one. And the reason I have two deeps there, I know I mentioned that I do just one deep brood chamber, is that that one, after it swarmed, they filled it up with so much nectar that there was literally no open cells for the queen to even lay eggs when she came back from her mating flight. So I put another deep on it and found some, some frames I had with empty cells and put those in there to try to give her room to actually start laying brood. Because it was right in the middle of a nectar flow and there was just, they were just going to town with the, um, with the collecting. So I'm gonna pop this honey super off right here and get the camera positioned. Heavy. Put it over here on this top board that I already had. Now it looks like I definitely have some honey down here. So now I'm gonna lift gently. Ah, not what I want to do. Try not to pop it because it will pop up. Try to slowly peel this queen excluder off because you know you don't want to agitate the bees. I'm just looking to see, make sure she's not on this thing before I set it over here. Just set it over here on top. Now, quite a bit of burr comb here. Now these bees seem a little more agitated than the other group. What I'm gonna do is just give them a little smoke. Now, the purpose of the smoke, in this case, it does two things. The first thing it does is it pushes the bees down into the box, gets them off the top. Because what I'm trying to do here is just clean this burr comb off of the tops of my frames here. And I don't want to squish too many bees. Just cleaning this up. Because if not, the next time I try to get in this hive, she's going to be all, she's going to be stuck together. Now I mentioned there were two things that the smoke did. So the first thing the smoke does is it pushes the bees, in this case it pushes them down into the hive, off the tops of the frames, so I can scrape them off here and clean them up real quick. Uh, the other thing that it does is that bees release pheromones when they are agitated, and those agitation pheromones that they release, they, um, Agitate the other bees around them when they smell them they start to get agitated and then you end up with a hive full of agitated bees And then they are not very happy with the things that are going on And they can become a little ornery So we just don't I want to keep my bees not being ornery So I can work them as quickly as possible All right Not as clean as I would like but Getting a little clean a lot of it's cleaned off. All right, one more little smoke there. All right, now I like to start one frame over from the outside board. because And the reason is because I feel like when I push on this outside board, as your frames get older, they flex. They're not as tight as they are when you first buy them or put them together. So I like to start from the second to the outside because I feel like when I'm, um, prying that one apart because they'll glue them together. Um, I feel like when I'm prying that one apart, it puts less uh, stress on the box itself. All right, so I'm looking at this hive, I mean this hive, this frame. And so I can see with this frame here, there were some, uh, looks like leftover little broods, brood, uh, cells if I get my words but what I'm seeing here is a lot of pollen now I'm on the other side I've got the Sun on a different side now I'm trying to see this one here we got a lot of honey it's a lot of honey on this 
on this one. Now I'm going to look up here. All right, so that's a good sign. All those empty cells that you could see, all these empty cells here, when you hold it up, you kind of got to turn it sometimes into the sun because some of these, some of the comb gets really dark. But I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of larva in that frame. So I'm going to gently set this frame right here against the edge of the hive. And I'm going to go on to the next one. Go to this next frame. Pull her out, see what we got. All right, so on this one, we have a fair amount of honey. It's a fair amount of honey up on the top edge. But we've got our brood comb. And I probably shouldn't have worn my sunglasses. But I went to the eye doctor today and had my eyes dilated. So they had been a little sensitive to the light. But in here, I kind of blow on them get them to move see see all that brood all right so it's a fairly thick pattern that she's laying the queen and I can see in the empty cells around the bottom I can see larva I'm gonna see if I can find her on this frame by any chance just give it a quick look I said I'm not particularly intent on finding her uh, it's not a must to find find the queen when you're doing this i'm more just going to pull a few frames as i work across sorry sometimes i still have a reaction i use uh, i don't use the leather gloves if you, as you noticed i use these um i use uh dish gloves i just get them from lowe's or walmart or wherever and I feel that I have more, much more dexterity with uh, my fingers when it comes to using these. And I, a lot more sensitive, I can feel the bees on them so I don't squish as many. Now, this frame, now that is what you like to see. That is a lot of brood. She has been an active queen. Now on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot of larva and not as much brood they've definitely hatched but she has been laying in here so she is a very active queen there's a lot of bees and also a lot of brood in here so since i've seen some very young larvae and i've seen a lot of brood these bees are starting to get a little agitated with me and to be honest with you um oops I guess I want to kind of keep them in order. Here, you want to try to put your frames back in order. So, these bees seem to, there seems to be a queen in here because I see a lot of, um, try not to squish any bees. That's how you get stung a lot, is by actually squishing the bees more so than them actually stinging you. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this one back together. What I might do, I know I just said I was going to put them back together. What I might do is come over here to the other side. Because really, I guess, this is kind of a full box of bees. Um, so I want to make sure that I, there's no queen cell. I'm going to check one more and kind of see what I can find over here. All right, now, looking at this, this frame here is full of brood all right this is a very active queen very active queen i wonder where she is in this box all right anyway if we look right here look at all if i kind of blow a little bit get a move look at all that brood comb that box is full of brood comb. And look at the other side of this frame. Look at all that brood comb. This queen has been working. She is a layer. That is for sure. So, 
I didn't see any queen cells on those four or so frames that I pulled. So I think this box is good for now. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it though. It's about to explode population wise with all that brood comb. So I'm going to put this back on top. This is where I had the, the bees. Um, this is where I had the honey super setting on top of the top board. Just as one little word of advice, you don't want to, um, you don't want to ever set your frames and your hunt and your boxes. Don't ever set them on the ground because god forbid your queen was on there and she falls off on the ground and then you step on her or she doesn't make it back into the hive so i always try to put the the um telescoping top down on my bench here and then i try to set stuff on top of that or i put the top board down like this one on this side because i had the camera on the other side so i put the top board down and set everything on top of that that way of course, I was talking. I, I was talking into the MBs. Yeah, back up here. I'm trying not to squish you and squish them. It's hard with one hand. Just I slowly put it down and kind of move it before I set it down. I don't want to squish any more bees than I have to. Unfortunately, you're gonna squish a few. Whenever you work bees, there are going to be some casualties. So, but I try to limit that to as few as possible. All right. Now, I noticed where I had this frame sitting here on the side of this box. I always like to look and make sure that the queen isn't on here somewhere. That accidentally, you know, she accidentally got out of the box. I don't see her there. So, but anyway, I think I'm going to make that the video. <laughs> Bees are flying around me now. I appreciate y'all coming out and, and helping me and going through this um, with these two hives. They look pretty good. We saw the queen in one hive. In the other hive, there was a lot of signs that there was a queen and a lot of... Uh, a lot of brood comb so this hive right here is going to about to explode so i'm going to have to keep a good eye on it um, to make sure they don't end up starting to swarm soon so next time we'll check on it and see if there's any swarm cells and if there are then we'll we'll split it because i've got an empty box right over there that's all ready to go thank you for joining me the unprepared beekeeper i'll see you next time